Hello everybody, welcome to Resident Evil 2 Remake. We're playing Leon Kennedy. We're playing the A scenario. We're going to go for no box and no heals. Looking to... Yeah, just do a little bit of a challenge run, get through the game. Make sure that we don't waste any supplies. And try our best to never touch the box itself. Uh, main reason for that is there's an achievement for both not healing yourself and not using the box and they are some of the harder ones to get so I figured I'd drop some strategies we did Claire not too long ago doing Leon now uh, strategies are a little bit different but we'll cover that once we get there first off you're just gonna wanna run past this guy grab the key easy stuff most of the beginning is decently free I'm gonna wait for him to walk past you and then just run he'll never grab you Never ever. And thus, the nightmare begins. I'm skipping cutscenes throughout this run, mainly to save on time and uh, save on video length, because uh, otherwise these, these videos get fairly long, and yeah, mainly here for the strategies, mainly here for the gameplay. The run into Raccoon City is decently easy, uh, just keep a decently wide berth on most of the character, or most of the zombies, and make sure you don't get grabbed, it's easy enough. You'll see me aiming on the stairs. A, the aiming on the stairs is for... basically it's supposed to speed you up in some capacity. Uh, the aiming animation is supposed to be faster than actually running up and down the stairs. Once you get in here, you just grab the bullets, check the computer, skip, skip, skip. And then the true nightmare begins, again. Big things that we want to do besides getting all the key items to get through this section, we want to make sure we have uh, upwards to 90 handgun bullets. You can make it through with, I think, a minimum of like 70, 72-ish, but I believe before we get to the first boss fight, we managed to get 94 or some, some ridiculous number. Main reason for this is we're going to be doing a body shot strategy as opposed to a hyper aim strategy on the eyeball. And this is on console, so the knife strats that you see in some other runs don't work. So we're saving Elliot. He gives us his notebook for saving him. He's definitely okay. First thing you want to do is wait for the zombie to come through the door. Wait for him to crawl over the table. And then just run past. This will lock him in this room. He won't bother you when you come through here later. Next one's a little tricky. There's going to be two zombies up here. You want to stick to the right as much as you can and kind of aim towards Leon's right shoulder. You should be able to get past them no problem. But, it's early enough in the run that if you do screw that up, it's easier to reset. Again, more bullets. Uh, you do have the knife now as a defensive item. I try my best not to get snatched at any point, but uh, it doesn't work out for me later on in the run. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... I, I try my best to be more careful that I don't need to use the defensive items. It gets me more item slots for later. And as we'll see in later parts... Uh, bullets to the left here. Make sure to grab those. As we'll see in later parts, I get really lucky with headshots, so not only does my 
uh, difficulty adjustment go way, way up, I end up having way more bullets than most runners do at certain points. Cool. So you want to turn around, grab the bullets off of this body. And we're going to clear out some zombos here. I'm going to shoot this dude. See, two shots and he gets just head splort. Usually doesn't happen. Unfortunately, if you don't get the head pop, you kind of have to shoot until you feel comfortable enough. Um, if they come back later, great. Or not great, but you know, you'll deal with them when you can. So we go through this section quite a few times. Going to board up this window just so these zombies don't bother you later. A gentleman up the stairs, make sure you take him out as well. And again, just shoot until you feel comfortable, but don't overdo it. You don't want to waste your bullets. Not now, at least. You're decently limited until a little later in the game before they start just pouring bullets into your lap. Get our spade key up here. Uh, get the spade key up here. There you go. interesting thing about key items is you can't get rid of them until you've used them all the way. So you need to make sure that you use the the key items at every juncture that you can. Some of them have up to, I think, six or seven uses, others one or two. But you want to make sure that you use them all the way through that you can... Jesus. Was my aim that bad in this spot? My goodness. Uh, but yeah, you want to make sure that you use them up so you don't have them in your inventory, because they take up precious space. And again, shoot until I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable. I was wasting bullets at that point. I duck in here early. You can come here later if you want, but I grab the gunpowder in this locker, as well as the bullets in this locker. It's not that many, but, you know, every every little bit counts. Every little bit is useful for later on in this in this game. So now that we have the spade key, we're going to duck into this room, grab some gunpowder off of the desk. Should be some bullets in here. And we'll do our first puzzle to get our first hip pouch. I forgot the code when I first did it. There you go. 9157. That'll get you your first hit pouch. Two extra slots, always helpful. So we're going to hit the peak of the desk here. We're going to grab the rookie assignment. Left side is Ned, right side is MRG. You can find that by looking at the last names of the police unit peoples on their desks. This is uh, Leon, Leon's first rookie assignment. You get the extended magazine, which does not make your Matilda larger, so equip it right away. There's a Mr. Raccoon up here. We're going to shoot it. Uh, also shoot that space for our difficulty adjustment. You're going to want to hit the stairs and then swing back around. Take this guy out. It's going to take more than one shot, but like I mentioned earlier, I got really lucky on a lot of these. Making our way over here into the waiting room. There's another safe behind the desk. This one is 6211, and this will get you the muzzle break. And a 
again, putting this on the Matilda does not increase its size. It's not until you get the stock that it makes it larger. So you can safely attach those to your gun. You're going to want to duck in here and grab the weapons key card. This will get you the shotgun in a little bit. We grab it now so we can run past that area later and get it. I also grab these boards. I don't have to. There's another set of boards that we'll, we can grab um, a little closer to our location. The speedrun tech here. If you aim at that window, the lurch animation moves you forward. So if you want to save a half a second, feel free. <laughs> but behind Leon is another pair of boards that you could grab if you would prefer instead of running down that hallway. I'm surrounded by zombies. Marvin, you and we'll be using the boards here very shortly. Marvin. Damn it. So our main thing here is to use the bolt cutters in all the sections that we can. They are used three times, we've used them twice. There's some bullets on this body here, but more importantly you want to board up this window. We're going to be coming through this section quite a few times a little later and want to make sure that we've got that just open and available. If you'll notice, I was supposed to grab the fuse, but I didn't confirm it into my inventory. So the run gets a little spicy here because I realize, oh, I don't have the fuse and I have to go back in that room to get the fuse. So, a little adventure time. A little butt puckering. Uh, I grab as much distance as I can so I can kind of reset things, and I forget that there is other zombies. So we get grabbed. Knife. Remember that knife. Remember that knife. It comes back a little later. <laughs> Cool. So now that we've got the spade key, we want to use the rest of it. We're going to be going up into the library. Oh wait, are we? No, we're not. We're going to go use the rest of the bolt cutters, is what we're going to do. So you want to run down this hallway, but you got to stop a couple times. There's some dudes that have uh, occupied the hallway. Uh, quick headshot will stun them. That guy got head-splorted. Like I said, I got a, I get a lot of those here. I'm going to use our bolt cutters here for the last time. going to start our collection of flashbang grenades as well, just for the sake of safety, um, also to basically dedicate our inventory slots. Uh, yeah, 109, there we go. So first time through here, 109 will get you the bullets at the end. It's the only thing that I'm interested in. I do my runs a little bit different than most people, so I'll, I'll try and explain whenever I run into a situation where I diverge from what most people do. It's not necessarily safer, it's just it felt more correct to me for the way that I play the game. So we get our shotgun. We reload our shotgun. And since we killed those zombies earlier, we can go through here without any worries. Since we boarded up this window, we can also go here without any worries. From here we're headed to the star's office. But first we have to go through the locker room. Do not open the left one. The left one has a zombie in it. First open this one. The password is CAP. C-A-P. Shotgun shells. We've got some more shotgun shells in this locker here to the left. Locker on the right has nothing, and there's a portable safe, but we don't need it yet. We don't have the inventory space for it, and it's better to grab it in a later part of the run. Got some gunpowder in the locker here. 
Uh, I do a com combination here to make some inventory space just to have it open for myself. Some shotgun shells on the bench here. What you're going to want to do is run, just run to the door. The liquor is preoccupied in his attack animation. He won't stop to look at you. He won't do anything with you. We get some shotgun shells. We get some yellow gunpowder here, which we combine with the blue to make more shotgun shells. There's a Mr. Raccoon here behind the computer. Shooting mostly for DA. I think I do two more shots to get rid of the extra ammo from my inventory. Uh, but also works, or fixes our DA a little bit more. And that's just to have the extra space. We do need bullets, but I'm already up to 84. And as I mentioned earlier, I think the most that we'll need is like 90. And they'll will come apart way later when I have far too many bullets and I just start randomly shooting stuff for the sake of it. Uh, we'll, we'll see that a little later on though. So, lickers can smell you and they can hear you, but they can't see you. You want to sneak past them as much as you can, as well as you can. We come up to our first puzzle. The answer is fish, scorpion, and urn, or water jug. And this will get you the unicorn medallion. There's also a gunpowder on this table here. Feel free to grab it. And be careful going into the library. The zombie that's in here might be wandering. But for us, luckily, she's over there. We'll go ahead and get another head splort and two, I think. Yeah. And then we'll waste some shotgun bullets on this guy because I can't aim for crap. So here's one. There's two. Oh, okay, we only wasted two. No big deal. So you want to prepare this before you get too much further. You want to slide that one on the right to the left one, and then both of these to the right one. This will prepare the bookcases for when you come through here later, when Mr. X is chasing you, who is a jolly happy fellow, and uh, certainly is not out to punch you in the back of the head like he did to me several times. Um, I get lost again. Wrong way. This way. There you go. The zombie above you, and take him out. When you blow up the C4 in this section, the zombie will drop down and will block your path, so you just want to take him out. If you shoot him enough to get him to fall, he's actually dead. I don't know why I shot him again. Fun, maybe. Get another hip pouch. Ooh. There's some gunpowder back here. Right, right here. There you go. I thought there was something else back there, but there isn't. There's nothing else for you to, to look for. So, we are going to plug in the C4, or the detonator, sorry, to the C4. And you're going to want to run through the door. Wait for the door to close, run back through. This prevents the bookshelf from falling in front of the door. And it allows you to escape the liquor that's going to be in here for later. The solution to this is lady face, arrow, and snake. A little harder to see, but if you squint enough, you should be able to see it. And this will get you the maiden medallion. And that's our second of three that we're going to get. So this liquor, the best way to get past him is to run directly at him and then aim for Leon's right shoulder and run against the column. He will never hit you. I never trust it, but he will never hit you. I squeeze every time, I promise. Uh, grab your shotgun, pop this guy's head off. We're going to come through here a few times a little later. It's just easier to deal with him now. Uh, this will be the last use of your spade key, so you can drop it as soon as you would like, once you get into your inventory again. But here we get more bullets, and I can't remember how many I have at this point. Uh, I want to say I have over 100, and this makes Birkin, Birkin 1 way easier. <laughs> We need our last medallion, the lion medallion. The solution is lion, branch, and bird. There you go. That gets you the lion medallion. And thus completes the RPD-1. We're coming back here another two times, but this is our first encounter with the place. Get rid of that and just start dropping medallions. This is where you start mentally preparing yourself for fighting G1 Birkin. Our, go our boy Billy Birkin. 
the swollest scientist. He's got many names. <laughs> so on the desk up here should be some gunpowder. I do the combine just to get it out of the inventory. Also get some shotgun shells. And I almost hit the box, but here is where we take our first safety save. Uh, I take quite a few saves throughout the run just to make sure that it's successful. Also to show that you don't need to be a qualified master speedrunner, you don't have to be a top 10 player. You can take your safety where you need it, you can be calm, cool, collect, clean. It's just a matter of how many times are you willing to do it. Alright, Billy Burks. Oof. So, the majority of the shots I take here are all body shots, which is why I have so much ammo. Um, you kind of just unload into him. Just keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. You want to, when you run, you want to make sure that you stay within visual distance of Billy Burks. If you get out of his visual range, he will wander away and disappear and then drop in on you. You can avoid him when he does this, but uh, there is a possibility that he just grabs you while you are not in a good position and uh, hits you, and we're trying not to take damage, so that's where we're going. If you'll notice, the eye on his shoulder opens up every once in a while. That will do some extra damage if you would like to take the time to aim for it, but you don't need to. We've got enough bullets to take care of this without issue. Once he kneels down like that, just take aim, keep shooting. You can put 24 bullets in your extended mag. You may as well just go bop, 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 bop. Uh, don't get hung up on the, the scenery here like I did. Also, usually he like tries to grab you or swing at you while he's chasing you, but he's just straight up booking it trying to get me. And I get caught on the wall looking for him, so he does the attempted grab. I shoot a couple times to get his attention again. And I just go full Leon Royd boy here and just lay into him until he's dead. I don't recommend doing that, unless you feel comfortable with restarting if you screw up. <laughs> But now that Billy Birkin's down, that's our first boss fight. Woo, easy stuff. Go around, we're gonna grab a grenade, and we're gonna grab, I think, three handgun bullets to basically refill almost everything that we shot through the run. But yes, cheeks have been clapped for the first Billy Birkin. So two sections on the left of the ladder, and one more section on the right side of the ladder. There are also green herbs here if you need them, but since we're doing this damageless, I don't need them. I'm just showing them off so you can see where they are. And we're going to press on. Some gunpowder in the shelf here to the right. There's also another green herb deeper into that room, but again, Taking no damage, don't need to don't need to undamage, you know what I mean? Also, as we saw earlier when I got into the underground section for the first time, we'll see some uh, some beautiful transitions. Now they're they're default transitions in the uh, in the program that I'm using but those transitions will mark whenever I take a save. So as you're watching, keep an eye out for those if you'd like to know where I took my saves and where you may want to take yours. There's a hip pouch here. The, the thing about RE2 Remake is your amount of saves that you take, at least in standard and easy mode, do not get rid of your rank later. So you can save as many times as you want uh, I took it as a personal challenge to not take as many saves 
I think max I did was six hey, or seven this I'm time around. And they're all safety saves, mainly because uh, there were some sections where I was losing my mind trying to get through them. But, blow this guy's head up. He bothers you later, but if he's dead, he can't bother you, so... Take him down, take him out. Uh, shotgun is definitely more... More versatile in this run compared to the grenade launcher that Claire gets. Uh, both great weapons, but I do prefer the shotgun. That's just my thing. I, I enjoy shotguns. So we grab the crank here, and we're going to head into the kennels. Everyone's favorite part. For Claire, the kennels are full of liquors. For Leon, the kennels are full of dogs. Arguably, dogs are more difficult to deal with than liquors, and I hate them so much. <laughs> But we have a few strategies, we have a few cheese ways to get past them, and that's what we'll we'll go through, we'll do, and see about taking care of the section as easy as we can. Again, most people will come to this section, or the we'll grab some stuff from here later. I get them now because I I don't know. It feels more comfortable for me. There's some shot blah, blah, excuse me. There are some shotgun shells here. There's a Mr. Raccoon here. Top. Again, we're shooting mostly for our difficulty adjustment, but also to show where they are. I grab the lunchbox, because I have the space. And now... Now we go deal with the fun puppies. Woo! I heard you. <laughs> I believe there's gunpowder here. Yep. And then each dog takes four shots. Some of them I kill in less. But I still take four shots just to show that you have the ammo economy to deal with them being the way that they are. You want to take these out now or else they bust down the cages when you're trying to escape later. And that makes for an unhappy everybody. We're going to skip that room first because we're going to come back through here anyway. It's just a little bit faster. Again, this is not a speed run, but I do try to do faster tactics where I can. It's just, it's easier, it's how I learned to do it, and I hope to pass on some, some knowledge to everybody at the same time. The door's right there. There you go. There, oh, there you go. Some gunpowder here. Just grab it for now so I don't freak out about it later. Grab the, there you go, key item. This is one of two pieces that we need to complete the next puzzle. And speaking of puzzles, we get to watch me hard struggle with this button puzzle. I'm just imagining Leon standing here, just click, 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 click. And Mr. X in the background like, bro, come on. You almost got, come on, you almost got it. Yeah. No? Oh, almost. There you go. Alright, so once this is activated, you're going to want to make a hard sprint to get out of here. There is a zombie that appears as well as a dog. We can avoid these. There's going to be a dog right outside this door at the gate. You want to kill that one. But actually, you want to kill that. There you go. And then, around the corner here is going to be another dog that will jump in and run right here. But I didn't trust it, so I walked into the hallway and almost got myself bit. Right here. But, lightning fast reflexes. Pop this guy's head so you don't have to worry about him when you're getting out of this room. But we're going to be grabbing the diamond key as well as another flashbang in this room. I don't know why I decided to open the lunchbox here. I think I was looking at my inventory for space. Yeah, I was making some more room. So I have more space for some key items. There we go. Five slots. I'm also moving stuff around so it's right up at the top. It just makes it easier to use once you get to those locations. So what I was trying to do here, you can open the door just enough to grab the key and have this zombie not activate.
but he activated anyway. But the only real worry is this zombie at the door, which we've already taken care of. There's going to be one more worrisome dog here. But should only take one shotgun shell. <clears throat> should only take one shotgun shell. There we go. Jesus. Cool. Now we're going to try and get back into the parking lot. But it has also been overrun with doggies. I try to take one out at a distance. I just end up alerting all of them. I get nervous because I didn't want to lose the run at the point. Or at this point. But if you move in far enough that they notice you. They'll crowd around the door. They can still grab you. They can still bite you at the door. So be careful. But if you open the door and throw some shotgun shells in here. You can take them all out. I believe there's only three. We get the achievement here for shooting a dog while jumping, so that's fun. That should take care of all of them. Of course, I'm still nervous because I don't I don't play Leon as often as I play Claire, so running through here, I'm still mentally trying to decide. Oh, is this is this safe? Are we good? But we use the key fob here. This opens up the trunk to this car and gets us the stock for the Matilda, which will increase the size of your weapon. So, if you are overloaded on space, please keep that in mind, but if you've been following the guide so far, you should be good to go. We can also get rid of that key at one point, but my main thing right now is to get rid of the diamond key uses as quickly as I can, which means opening this door. There is a film in here if you want to pick it up, but I don't grab the files on this run. There is one film that I will grab and I'll point it out when I get to it, and it is for a purpose. But for now, we're going back into the RPD. Checking all of my guns, making sure they're all loaded. Doing my pretend speedrun strats up the stairs. Grab some shotgun shells over here. Got a few things to grab in here. I always turn on the light because it feels nice. Some stuff in the locker here. I believe this one also. Yep. Bullets. There's a Mr. Raccoon behind the doctor's bag here. Those are Magnum bullets. You can grab them if you want, but we're not getting the Magnum for another like 45 minutes. And it just takes up space, so I leave them here. I never grab them. I never need them. But primary thing, we want to make sure that we've got the crank, we've got the diamond key, and we've got the fuse. So we're going to see some superlative aiming here. I'm going to get all headshots back to back. Ready? Miss. So that's one. Didn't work. But he died, so we're good. And that guy got uh, destroyed. So we use the fuse here. Elliot will be on the other side of the door. We're going to pop him with the handgun. And again, one shot, one kill. I don't know why I got so lucky in this run with those, but uh, we'll see a few more of them along the way. So reload your stuff. It's at this point where I forget... I forget the next part of my run. <laughs> and I end up going to the typewriter to grab a save before I start RPD2. So we're starting RPD2. Uh, I mercy kill Marvin every time. Rest in peace, boy. We appreciate you, Lieutenant. I promise. I make sure that I have the ammo economy to uh, to take him down. So we're going to be doing a lot of pre stuff, and this is where my run diverges a little bit from most people. Uh, most people immediately go and activate uh, Mr. X and start doing the rest of the area. I try and get more inventory space and clear out some other items that I have that I just don't want to hold on to. So what I do is I grab the hand, or sorry, the book. We're coming through here to use the crank for the last time. And 
And then we're going to come in here. We're going to use the book with the hand. Shove the arm into the statue to get the scepter and the pretty jewel. And that stays our in, in, our, in our inventory. Jeez. It stays in our inventory for a little while. Also take some unnecessary risks in this section, so be ready for some excitement a little later. <laughs> so now we have these. I go back through the library to use the diamond key for the last time. As well as to pick up all of the electronic boxes to get the keys to go back into the armory and get the hip pouch, some more shotgun shells, and I believe a gunpowder. But more, more inventory management stuff, more clearing of space, and more giving of space. So once you get to here, you want to slow down. As I mentioned earlier, lickers will hear you and come after you if you're running. There's one in this hallway always. We grab our first electronic safe, portable safe. I get rid of some stuff. Got some gunpowder here. Uh, I know what you're thinking. Hey, you have some yellow gunpowder. You should combine that with the blue gunpowder you just got. And you would be right. But there is a larger gunpowder that we can get a little bit later. And we can get a guaranteed six bullets instead of a two to three shotgun shells. Which we can get now. I prefer more ammo economy over less, if I can. Once you're through the door, you can run. Lickers don't know how to use doors. Got another portable safe here. And we've got another liquor in this hallway down here. So what, you're sh what you should do is go to the right and just go through the door, but I go around because I'm built different. No, that was, that was definitely a risky thing to do. So what, what's smart to do here, if you want to make sure that you get this done correctly, is just write down what button corresponds with what color and then do it that way. But I try to memorize it as I push the buttons. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Other times you forget the solution entirely, trying to redo what you did in your brain, and it just... It's a thing. It works out when it works out, and it doesn't when it doesn't. Come on. Almost. Yep. I think I screwed up the solution on both boxes at the very last button. Uh, both times, so. And get to watch me mentalize my way through this. But, first, first button, now we do our second one. Come on, Claymore. Yeah, exactly. That's the main reason I do this early, is to get a new hip pouch. New hip pouch, uh, again, shotgun shells and gunpowder. So just ammo and space. What more could you ask for? Ammo and space. Come on, Claymore. There you go. Oof. I promise the rest of the puzzles go a little bit smoother. <laughs> but now we have both buttons. Something I didn't know, I learned about this recently, you can actually stack those buttons in your inventory. So if you ever get them early and then forget to come here, uh, you can stack them into one space. So, little pro tip, little interesting stuff to think about. The codes we want to use got 103, I'm oh, sorry, 102, 
I screw it up twice. Uh, 102, 203, and 208. This will get us the gunpowder here. The hip pouch here. And some shotgun shells. Boom. Again, the liquor is here. Be careful. Don't do not do what I do here. So I open the door and I get nervous. I open the door again and he's still there. So I just, I booked it. I'm like, fuck it, go. Dangerous. Don't do that. They can, they can do things to you. Um, you want to make sure that the liquor's as far away from the door as possible before you just sprint through. But that does the do the second part of the RPD, at least for the item collecting that we're doing, before we activate Mr. X, which we're going to go do now. You got a Mr. Raccoon on the table here. Pop. Got some bullets in the locker that we're going to open here. I grabbed this board now. We're going to need it a little later. Got some shotgun shells here. Quick turnaround. Grab the gear. And in a smart run, you will never go through here again. Uh, but in this run, we come through here later. <laughs> There's a flashbang in here. We'll give you your first full stack. Flash grenades will be used throughout the run at various points and are extremely helpful. I didn't believe in them in my Claire run and I decided to try to use them in the Leon run and wow, they are... they're helpful. <laughs> so you got two zombies in here. I'm gonna try and head pop them both. Boom. I'm gonna miss her. Because she trips. You want this on the left? Uh, I did find out a little later here that you can move it back and forth. You want it on the left. It should stay locked when you move it left, but it doesn't. Whatever. Juicy headshots. That's why I like this shotgun. That's why I like shotguns in these games. Uh, take the time to get the jewel here. We're going to need it in jewel form a little later. Again, I take a different route than most people. I try to make it spicier than it should have been. You can do all that stuff in run three of the RPD without Mr. X chasing you, but it's less exciting. So we're getting rid of the fire, we're getting the uh, handgun bullets. Again, I start going overload. So what I do is I run barely into view and then come back out here. What this does, uh, Mr. X is in high alert as soon as you trigger him, but I have found that if you do it this way, he kind of de when he gets to the door and slow goes through it. So you can just run past him while he's kindly holding the door open for you. Uh, I have had moments where I've completely lost him at that section because I did it too fast, and that gets a little nerve-wracking. But we are going to go use the key, the club key, here soon. Primary use of this is to get the crank so we can get the shelves in the library done and then get into the clock tower section. So running through that door is going to activate the liquor that's in there. You wait long enough for him to de-aggro and once he's de-aggroed he just disappears. Make sure you check the door before you run through or else you're going to get attacked. I grab the door first and then take care of the zombie. It takes two shots for me because I'm bad. And then go in here. There's a grenade at the top of the table and the crank at the bottom of the table, but I have no inventory space. What do I get rid of? Did I get rid of the board? Ah, get rid of the blue gunpowder. Right. 
because we have tons of handgun bullets. So I was going to go out and meet Mr. X, but I think he's in the hallway already, and I just wait. I keep it safe. Fun fact, when you hear his theme song, it means he knows exactly where you are, and he's coming to find you. But he's also kind of a dummy, so you just juke him around and go straight into the library. And if you prepared the shelves the way that I showed you a little earlier, it should be easy enough to prep them once you've used the crank. Mr. X should be at the bottom of the stairs. He's coming on over. So we'll use the crank, gets it out of our inventory, start opening up some more slots, and some more space. Helpful with our no-box run. If you grab all the way from the left, you can push them all at the same time. Up the ladder. Mr. X just came into the room, trying to find out where I am. Okay, so... Uh, don't do what I did. What you should do is take your handgun... Yeah, I ended up wasting a flash grenade here. So you should take your handgun and do a quick headshot to stun the zombie, and then shoot it in the head with your shotgun. Right? That will get you a guaranteed kill almost every time. The other thing that I should have done here before I came into the room was make sure that I had murdered the other zombie, because I got nervous and just ran. But he turns out to be alive, and we have to deal with him a little later. But, since we're here, come up all the way, we grab the small gear, replace it with the large gear, And then we use the small gear on this here. And behind the small gear placement is a door, which will lead to a large gunpowder and another Mr. Raccoon. We shoot the space, boop, grab the gr uh, gunpowder, combine it for some more shotgun shells, and like that we're up to 15. Ooh. On your way back, make sure all your stuff is reloaded. And now, the fun part. We have to figure out where Mr. X went. So, slowly open the door. Very carefully. Make sure he's not by the door. Peek out. So that's the way you want to go. Every time. I decide not to worry about it. And I'm like, well, the, where I need to go is connected on the other side, so let's go through and just waste some ammo on this zombie, because this is the only one we have to deal with, right? Again, headshot did not work for me, but I'm not coming through here again, so I just ran. And as soon as I get to the door, I realize there are two zombies in here that I didn't deal with earlier. Screw it, go. One, boom. Actually got the headshot. And we ignore the other one, just run straight through. So again, spicy gameplay, don't do what I did. But now, uh, also, playing with fire, we're going to go down the stairs here. We're going to be using our boards on this window. Claire uses the heart key here. Leon uses the club key here. We get our jewel box. We put the jewel in the box. We get rid of our club key. Uh, and we have just gobs more inventory space than some runs that I've seen that come here. A little more risky. Yes, sure. But it's fun. I enjoy it. I hope you guys are enjoying it. <laughs> uh, just playing some inventory Tetris because it feels nice. 
There's some handgun bullets on this side. On this side, there you go. And I believe another gunpowder on the body. Did I grab it? I did. Cool. Uh, I make some more shotgun shells here. So now we're up to 16 total. Also, Mr. X doesn't chase you down here. But he sure busts down that wall to find you down here. <laughs> I usually wait for him to come towards the door. He doesn't actually come into this room. But from what I recall, he essentially resets his aggro table if he gets to the door. And then he'll go back through the hole in the wall that he made. And we wait for the stompies to go as far away as possible. I heard the crashing window, got nervous, and decided just to book it. I'm pretty sure he's above me at this point. But we're far enough away from the, uh, the whey protein boy that we can return to the parking lot and continue on with our run. You want to just sprint through the hallway. There's going to be some zombies that come after you, but we're not coming here again, ever. Make sure you do whatever cleanup you need to do in the area before you progress, but if you've been following along, you should have all the items that you need to get yourself a successful run through the rest of the game. I was just double checking to make sure I had what I needed. Alright. So, we're going to do the pipes puzzle that is all over Bioshock and only in here twice, once per playthrough. The idea being you want both power sources to meet at some point and then connect them into the upper right. Uh, the one thing that I always remember is the placement of the blue piece, which should be facing down for this run. Like that. And then the rest is just making sure all the pieces fit. Miss being a plumber. Cool. So, in here there is a file, there is the parking key, and there is a first aid spray in the toilet, which is where we're going to leave it because we don't need no heels. What are they after? So you want to run far enough into this room to hear the footsteps, and then jam yourself in this corner, wait for Mr. X to round the corner, and then just take a wide berth and try not to get punched in the face. Once you get through here, toss your flash grenade. And the rest of this is free. Free and easy. Cutscene. And that's the last we see of Mr. X for a little while. Next section's kind of slow, a little, you know, enough time for me to screw around with the aiming mechanic because I'm a child. Is that the intel you needed? Unfortunately, no. Ben didn't come through. Well, what exactly are you looking for? Of course, serpentine pattern uh, to avoid the snipers that are in this section. Just be careful. 
There are no sp snipers. Roads out. Going through that gun shop looks like the only way. Also, thank you, Ada, for letting us know that the road is out. Um, there's an entire section of the ground missing. Wow. So we're going to grab some uh, grenade here, going to grab a shotgun piece, which will make your shotgun bigger. Please be careful, but you should have the space for it by this point. There's a letter there that will give you an achievement for finding a note to Jill. And then um, Kendo sees to his daughter, everything's okay, I promise. I forget if there are more items in there, but I don't think there are, so I keep going. Heard of the Umbrella Corporation? They're a pharmaceutical company secretly making bioweapons. They have a virus. It turns people into indestructible monsters. That explains the horrible things I've seen. And that's why I'm looking for a net surgeon. She's the one <sighs> umbrella responsible for unleashing the virus. I'm the to get to it. Based on what you've said, the sewer seems fitting. Gee, thanks. Gee, thanks. Can't imagine a real scientist being down here. The banter between these two. So well written. So Come ace. <laughs> sewers are run by the city. How could they have a facility without the authorities knowing? Welcome to corporate America. Umbrellas controlled Raccoon City. Jesus! That an earthquake? What the hell? So I grab a safety save here, not because I'm nervous on what's coming up, but because I was nervous on the section I did previous, and I didn't want to screw it up. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to lose the progress there. <laughs> Again? It's not too late to turn back. Here. No chance. You're stuck with me to the end. All right. Gator boss. This is a really difficult fight, so you want to start off running to the left. And then you want to run immediately to the right. He's going to chomp twice, be careful. Now you want to run immediately left. And if you stay in the center here, you'll avoid the other debris. And then shoot the gas and he's dead. Done. Easy. Grab the grenade. There's a Mr. Raccoon on the left. I shot a bunch of bullets, because at this point I realized, hey, I've got like 115 of these things, and I don't need them all. Um, one of my attempts at this section, I think I got up to like 145 bullets, and I just... I don't... You don't need all them handgun bullets, so I just started using the handgun a lot more from here. Just get up here. Can't say I didn't warn you. You said the virus turned people into monsters, not reptiles. Fair point. I'm just impressed you made it in one piece. And again, more more messing with the, the aiming system. Uh. sells monsters like that to who? Our military? Somebody else's? They don't sell the monsters. Yeah. They sell the viruses that make them. And Annette is who makes the viruses. Scary as that alligator was, Annette is far more dangerous. So here we got Ada's section, and I decided to go for the no gun strats on this. So we're just going to be using her little EMF visualizer, which will also get you another uh, achievement. And full disclosure, I get bit in this. I, I, I didn't know what strategy to properly use to get past the zombie that bites me. And it makes me sad. But, again, 
showcasing that you don't have to be an expert to get these achievements. You don't have to play perfectly to do well at these games. So you're going to hit that. You're going to break the fan here. <clears throat> and before you drop down into the room below, you're going to switch the sh uh, switch here to the door, which will let you get through automatically. If you do it while you're on the ground, you have to deal with that zombie, and that's not fun. You want to kind of hug the right-ish as you're going through here. You go around the barrels and behind the shipping container, and then hug the shipping container. It manipulates the zombies a little bit better in the section. There's going to be a key over here that you have to hit. Get past this zombie. So I tried to manipulate this guy and then go all the way right, but he didn't agree with me. And he took a chomp out of my neck. But everything else went well. Always been good at running that. Mr. X gets triggered here, but if you do this fast enough, you'll never have to look at his ugly mug. So you hit that button on the right, open that first, and then switch. And now once you're in here... I wasn't close enough, I thought I missed the switch. But hit the fan, walk towards it while you're uh, charging it up. And then slip straight through. And again, aiming gets rid of some frames from your movement up the stairs and makes you go a little bit faster. It depends on the character, but I believe caution is helpful for Ada and Claire. Not that Ada is used for very long in these sections. Never get your filthy hands on the G. I'm not the only one after it. You realize that. And you won't die alone. Pretty straightforward here. You start with the button in the bottom corner, you hit the one on the left, hit the switch on the left, which activates the button on the right. And then there's another switch on your right, which activates the button in the middle. It'll be done in 30 seconds. Easy. Through the door and to the left. And we're done with Ada. Not gonna happen. This will get you the super spy trophy for not using your gun during this section. And now we're back to the Boy Scout. Ada? Where are you? Box and a save there if you want it. I, I didn't care to use it. I'd already used one before the alligator fight. I'm gonna drop down here. We're gonna... There you go. Got some handgun bullets on the trash pile there. That's a pleasant smell. Another item pick up in the left tunnel. Shotgun shells. So, 
be careful coming up here. There are times where the zombie I'm about to kill is already around the corner, and he has grabbed me, and I don't like it. But usually he's on the stairs here, and we're gonna miss, drop him, keep missing. But since I have a bunch of these bullets, take out a little bit of frustration. I think he's dead. Up on the pipe is another guy here. You got a guy taking a nap right here. And then this gentleman at the end of the hall. Boom. There's a safety knife here. Now we get to the fun part. All the GMU wins. There's a yellow gunpowder at the edge here that you should grab for more shotgun shells. So, when you shoot the G-mutants, they go up and then they go down. As soon as they hit the water again, you can just run past this one. You don't have to worry about them. don't have to deal with them. And you never come back through that section, so he never bothers you again. Cable car. Interesting. Cool. Shotgun shells there. SZF is the code for this one here. And we'll begin our collection of magnum bullets. I'm coming, Ada. Some more handguns. So what I do here before I go in is I prep the plugs. You move the night key to the night section. There's a bishop over here. You just want to place that on the far left. This makes it so you don't have to have an extra inventory slot when you come here and just saves you a little bit of time. There's a map on the right. I don't grab it. grab the last couple items to get started on the sewers section. I move some stuff around so I have the first slot open for some shenanigans. Grab the T handle here. And I do this section a little bit differently from most people, but it works out for me and helps get some item uses out of my inventory a little cleaner, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Code for this safe is on the side of it. Got 2128. And if you haven't already, I believe this triggers the open all safes and... No, no, we've got one more in the RPD. That's right. This gets you the shotgun stock, which makes your shotgun even better for aiming. And we'll take care of some of these young boys on the staircases. Unfortunately, I don't think I get any headshots. But, fortunately, I have over 100 bullets again. So I kind of just I unload a little bit. From here, literally, you only need 24 or so. So I just, I go ham and just shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> and I miss a lot too, so you know. Expert aiming. I think he's dead.
backtrack and grab that grenade, and I go through this section first. You'll get another one of those G-mutants coming out of the sewer grate to the right. If you stay to the left, you can get around them without any issue. You never have to come back through here, so no big deal, no problems. Shotgun shells on the barrel here. And up we go. Body on the floor, you want to pop his head off. Boom. Grab this film, we will need it later. That film is important. And not for the reasons that you guys think it's important, you pervert. Alright, next step is to get ourselves the rest of the uses of the T-handle, as well as the key that will get us back into the RPD for the final time. We still have quite a few things to collect. So instead of a G-mutant here, which you get with Claire, you end up with three zombies. And I actually get off all three headshots. It's a thing of beauty. Still got 12 shotgun shells. Still got 60, 71 bullets. Jeez. We're good. We're good on ammo. So you grab the key. You want to swing around the corner up here and use the T-handle. This is the second to last use of the T-handle. We'll come back through this section later, but for now we don't need to. For now, we're going back so we can go back into the RPD. We're going to be collecting the Magnum, and we're going to be locating the secret hidden places. We're also going to be getting the Magnum extension for the barrel, as well as the scope for the Magnum. And then some flamethrower rounds. All of which, very useful. I usually use the key here, so I can discard it once I get down the hallway. There's a yellow gunpowder and a big gunpowder. Make some more shotgun shells. Do the combining, do the discarding. Also prep the dongle for use in the computer once we get back into the RPD. I also grab the Rook plug here, just to have it for when we come back through later. Don't have to grab it. Don't have to forget it or remember it. Some more shotgun shells. Some more handgun bullets. Magnum bullets on the floor to the left here. I think I grabbed the grenade now. Yep. That gives us two full stacks of grenades. I don't save here for quite a while. Just 
I've got full confidence that I can make it to where I need to make it. <laughs> Final use of the T handle. If you didn't take care of Marvin earlier, you're going to have to here. He will activate. But for the moment, we need to develop this film. Again, slowly walk down this hallway. You don't need to bother with the stars room yet. We come back here in a few. You can go up here when you come back through later, but I just do it so I don't forget. Got one last code thing here. This one is DCM. And this will get you some more magnum bullets. Which is why we didn't grab it earlier, because it would have just taken up inventory space. Now we go all the way down to develop the film. You don't have to worry about the liquor all the way down the hall. He shouldn't be here. And he doesn't hear you down this far. I tried to discard it, but I was in the wrong menu. <laughs> there we go. Space. Dongle up to the top for easier access. You can grab the gunpowder and the handgun bullets when you're back here now, if you want to, but as as we can see our, in our inventory, uh, we, got a lot of, we got a lot of bullets. I think we're good. Almost done with our PD-3. So the liquor's supposed to be on the ceiling there, and I didn't see him, and I got nervous walking down this hallway. <laughs> so, secret location is here for the wooden box. If you check it again, you get another film, and if you develop that film, you get a pervy picture of Rebecca as a sports lady. But we don't do that in this run. Grab the dongle again. Grab the magnum. There's a note here. We also grab a flashbang that we didn't get earlier. Again, slow down. And just calmly walk down the hall. For most people, RPD3 is running around doing all the portable saves and getting the, uh, getting the bag, getting the gunpowders from earlier. But I cleaned that up when I was here the last time. I don't know if it saves you any time or if it's even more efficient, but it's the way that I feel most comfortable doing it. And I wanted to share that instead of the other way. So we got one more thing to grab before we leave. I think we get a couple more lucky headshots in here, too. One. Jesus. These are the ones that we dodged way earlier. And that's just me making sure she's dead. There's more bullets in here if you really care. You don't need to grab them. But... Head splort. And if you remember that knife from earlier, we got it back. Yay. So this is the other secret location. It's in this shelf here, or shelf cupboard, cabinet, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we get 400 flame fuel. Useful for later. I got nervous because the headshots weren't actually stunning her, and she was coming at me. Something fierce. 
But she also had splurted on her way down, so I felt pretty comfortable. And then another flash grenade. And now we're done with RPD-3. We never come back here. Pop open the wooden box, which gets us the red dot sight for the lightning hawk. I don't combine them yet because we still have one more thing to add to the lightning hawk. Which is our magnum, our big boy gun. As you saw, I made the badge a badge again, which can be used here which will open this display case, which will get you the barrel extension for the Lightning Hawk. And then once we're in here, we do some inventory management. And then go through and reload all your guns while you're going down the elevator. Alright, back in the sewers. I kind of try to remember what I need to do here, and I build out the map in my head, but continue along. Again, we cleared this section a little earlier, but if you haven't been here yet, you're going to run into three zombies. Checking all my bullets, making sure everything's loaded, ready to go. Prepared for the next three things that I'm looking to murder. Oh my god, this is getting worse. Cool. So there's a G mutant in the water here. You want to shoot him with your handgun to get him out, and then switch to your lightning hawk, and try and get aimed shots on the eyeball. If you do two shots, switch to your handgun, and then clean up with the handgun. Easy peasy. Same deal here, except this one has a shoulder covering. So it takes three shots to drop him down. And then just pop the eyeball. If you go swing to the left, there's some magnum bullets here. Replenish a few that we've used. Hang left. This guy won't jiggle you around, but once he gets out, you can slowly take him down. Son of a bitch. I agree, Leon. Son of a bitch. Used way more bullets there than I wanted to. <laughs> but that's those three G mutants, all good to go. Yep. All of them were. went fairly well, so I shot extra times to drop my DA a little bit more. And here we're going to be getting the Queen and King plugs, as well as the flamethrower. And move some stuff around to have inventory space just to make it easier. Pop this guy with a shotgun shell so he doesn't bother you. Easy. Now I need to make two spaces. I get rid of the knife. I think I get rid of the handgun bullets as well. Yep, 
And that gives me space for the two plugs that I need. And then we do the final puzzle to get ourselves unstuck. Now, we're on our way to Birkin 2. All these boys are dealt with, so you can just run past. No big deal. The one that we have coming up here is going to pop his head up just high enough to start football tackling. What you'll want to do is wait for him to run at you just enough. Let's swing over and climb up here. And then just casually go around him. Up the ladder. And that's the last we'll see of the G-Mutants. We opened up this path earlier. Swing around to the right instead of going up the tall staircase. Be careful just in case you were nervous about whether or not you managed to kill those guys. But that completes pretty much the entirety of the sewer section. We just have the one fight left. And I'm making sure that I have my flash grenades equipped. We'll see why in a second. Again, double check all your guns, make sure you're loaded. And now we can finish the puzzle. Rook piece goes here. Queen goes in the center, king on the left. And I decided to grab my safety save here, which is great because when I tried to fight Birkin the first there. time, uh, he slapped me. And it made me sad. I do a little better on this puzzle. There you go. <laughs> one, two, four for that one. So what you want to do is be smart and actually go to the door that triggers this fight, which I didn't do. I just ran around in circles. Trigger the fight. Tr trigger the fight. Come on. Trigger the fight. I, I didn't take damage there. Jesus I check Christ. it right here. We're still fine, we're good. So go a little bit behind the red herb here, but close to it. Wait for Birkin to smash his hand through and just start flamethrowers. He's supposed to punch twice, but he didn't for me. I guess I did enough damage to him the first time. He's gonna break through this grate here. Once he's all the way through, swing around, light him on fire. Wait until he turns towards you and just start running away. We'll take care of the rest of the fight in the actual arena. So, swing around here, hit this button, and then immediately toss a flash grenade, and then light him up. Wait for him to fall down. Uh, he does. He takes less damage when he's on his knees, as far as I'm aware. And once he's not on fire anymore, just light him up again. Once he stands, toss another flash grenade, and then light him up again. Hit the button. You can grab the stuff here if you'd like. And then pop him with a few more handgun bullets. And he's done.
Let's hope that's the last of them. Works 100% of the time, every time. I have six extra bullets, so I just shoot them out. Saves me some space. You you really don't need your handgun from here. <laughs> but yeah, that's Billy Birkin 2. Cable car will take us down to Nest. My wristbands, I take it to ride. Nice. Where'd you get that? I just go through all of my ammo, make sure that I've reloaded all of my weapons. We're headed to Nest and the final section of RE2. Shotgun shells on the left here. And your safety save in there. Okay. There's a grenade on the body over here. Some flamethrower rounds on the table here. Since zombies can't climb ladders, which I think is a Fallout Boy album, we climb up the ladder and there's a Mr. Raccoon on the table. Uh, I want to make sure I have my knife here in case I get grabbed. This guy can be just about anywhere, and he was out of sight for me. Made me nervous. I thought he may have been on the right side of the hallway. I get up here again, and he's just kind of chilling in the corner. So I take a blind shot, and uh, he's done. Ooh. Some shotgun shells on the table. And we've got a valve in here for the flamethrower. Upgrading our wristband here. If you stay to the right enough, that door on the left won't open, and you won't risk triggering some of those zombies to run out into this hallway. We do have to come back here later, and it's better just to keep it as safe as possible, clean as possible. Dr. Lee, your presence is urgently requested by Chief Cartwright in the East Area. I make some inventory space here. I have a yellow gunpowder I need to grab. Get rid of one of the knives. But yeah, yellow gunpowder on this shelf. Just run past these guys, you don't need to fight with them. Flashbang. 
We've got two codes we put in here. One is three, one, two, three. The other is two, zero, six, seven. Just pretend that the keys are like on a phone for the numbers. Dispensing solution. And of course I forgot to open up another inventory slot. I don't I think I get rid of the fuel. Which is fine, we don't need that much. There's 608 already. We don't need that much. We will need it a little later, but not that much. There's also the point where I stop making shotgun ammo and I start making magnum bullets. So I skipped the large gunpowder on the left there. I grabbed this grenade. Solution to this puzzle is red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green. Adjust amount of solution to match cartridge capacity. Now we've got the mixed solution. Now we need to cool the solution. So with the Groots here, the strategy is to shoot them in the chest with the shotgun and they'll leave you alone. That guy didn't. He tried to grab me twice. And we get a little spicy later when we come back through here. So more shotgun shells. We got three bodies to take care of so they don't resurrect later. You can leave this guy alone on the left. He won't come back. You want to run until about the pillar here and then stop running. Slowly walk. Once he activates, sprint into the room. If you run any sooner than that, he will grab you. His friend will come in and then it's just bad times. This is also the point where I feel less bad about using so many bullets on these things. Because I've got so many and I actually need to clear up some inventory space. You let this body fall. Shotgun. Got a yellow gunpowder on the left. Combine it with your other yellow for some magnum bullets. Combine those to make some space. And then we'll grab the modulator. The lady over here activated, be careful. Take her out. So what you want to do is you want to open this door. Um, if you're casually running, you want to run through here and activate the save section. And then go back. The liquors will reset in that room. But we have a final hip pouch to get. So we're going to go back and grab that real quick. As I mentioned earlier, if you steered clear of the doorway, you won't get anything in this hallway, but this guy in the next one will always be there. Be careful. One and done. So this one is Muff. I double-checked because I wasn't sure. But switch this over to Muff, and then make sure that the lines are lined up. And this turns on the power in this area. We've got a hip shot, hip shot, hip pouch, a thing to shoot, and then a headshot to make. I tried to say all that together and it didn't work out. <laughs> There's another note there, but that clears out this area. 
It's also one of three uses of the modulator and frees up an inventory slot. So we're going to go back into liquor territory here. As long as you've murdered all the zombies in this section, you shouldn't run into any more problems. They should all stay dead where they are. Slow down before you get to this door here. The liquor should hang out on the wall to the left. Uh, he's doing his thing. Just blah, 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 blah. Right on, bro. Just walk past him. He will come off the wall and you'll have to avoid him here in a second. But that's a problem for like 15 seconds from now. <laughs> you switch the modulator over to Murph. Quick, easy adjustment into the next section. Place it to turn on the power. And now we play chicken with a liquor. So what I like to do is I like to walk close enough that he gets activated. And then wait for him to get really close to this table on the right. Once he's past the corner of the table, he'll be basically stuck in his path and you just walk around him. And now we're here. Welcome back, Dr. Lee. You this is the section where we're going to get messages. our solvent cooled, Ugh. so we can actually spray it into the, the area. And clear out all the groots. There is a large gunpowder on the table to your left if you find yourself lacking for bullets. Cooling complete. Believe me, if you if you followed the run so far, you're going to have way more ammo than you're going to ever need, ever. He can probably go on a second adventure with how much we're going to have. Slow down. Walk into here. We have one more room to check, and then we're going to go back into the, uh, the area with all the groups. Liquor should stay on the right. Don't have to worry about him. Once you round this corner, there's going to be one on the wall to the right. Just stay to the left. Don't run. We've got a yellow gunpowder here. We've got fuel here, which you will probably need. You may not. Depends on how well your fight goes. So once we leave, slowly walk, go back into here. And here's where my Groot strategies just go out the window. So how this is supposed to work is if you shoot the Groot in the chest, he gets stunned long enough that you can go past him. I shot him in the back. I got stuck on him. I got grabbed. But... I had a knife. And then I panicked and just ran. Not an ideal strategy, but it worked. So we're going to plug in our solvent here, and get rid of all the extra vines and such. That did the trick. Warning. You have dispersed a dangerous solution without authorization. Your actions have been locked, and you may be subject. Cool. So, we need to get back to the main lobby now. I took a couple risks here, but I just started booking it, and uh, dodged. We're good. Mr. X is also active again. Woo. Just make a beeline here, and again, shotgun strategy should work, but it did not. I think I missed here. 
Yeah. But I had an extra flash grenade. And this section was already long. I didn't want to have to worry about coming back through here. There you go. I believe once you're out of that room, Mr. X no longer chases you, so you're good to go for for the moment. We're approaching our last section here. We're gonna make some more ammunition. We're gonna load up as much as we can for Billy Birkin, the third. The third and final Birkin. Should be a grenade on the ground here, which gives us our full stack of nine grenades at this point. And we'll be using all of them very soon. Switch this one to OS. This will be the last use of the modulator. There's a yellow can here. We'll run through the obviously not going to be a boss room. So you got a large gunpowder on the left. I'm going to combine these to make some space. Oh, sorry, there's a yellow gunpowder there, a large gunpowder on the s right here. And I just combined them to make some shotgun shells. I've already got way too much ammo at this point. I, I don't need all of this, but it's good to have. And I recommend a safety save here if you are unsure or nervous, but first grab the vaccine so you don't have to do the, or sorry, the G virus so you don't have to do this every single time. Trigger the fight, get in here. Go ahead and skip that cutscene, run past him on the right. There's gonna be a fuel can over here that you wanna grab. Not helping me today. But drop him to his knees, get out the flamethrower. You want to spend about 200 rounds. So just kind of barbecue him up a little bit. Make sure you get each side. I'm kidding, it doesn't really matter which, which side you shoot him on. some distance so he can walk towards you and you can get that eye on his shoulder. So when he does this, he's about to hit you with the four-piece combo. Once his arm is down on the ground like that, just shoot his eye until it pops. On the second down, just get up in his face and keep shooting. If you've done enough damage to him, this will kill him outright. He's going to get up, he's going to start screaming, we're going to be low on ammo, but just believe Believe in your weapon. Believe in the flamethrower. And that's Billy 3. Easy peasy. Cool. So we're on the last little bit. We're grabbing our 10th grenade. Uh, go around and grab the ammo pickups. There's some health stuff that you can grab as well if you've been hit or if you need to uh, take care of yourself a little bit. Got some magnum bullets, which we won't need. There's a bunch of handgun bullets around here, too. Also, don't need them. 
You will need two slots open in your inventory, so make sure that you've ke you've got those available to you. And that dies or whatever. You know, story stuff. Ada also dies or whatever. You know, more story stuff. And now we've got a 10 minute timer to get the F out of here. It's the best place to double check all your ammunition or play around with the aiming mechanic like I do. Honestly, you need you need two magnum bullets, two shotgun shells, and your grenades, and you should be able to get through the rest of this section. Um, and then you'll get to the end of the game. Always better to have extra, of course, just in case you miss, which I never do. I did. I did a couple times. Final flash grenade on the right here. Oh, it's a knife. I thought it was a flash grenade. I was, I should have taken it for safety, because my group strategy hasn't been working. Cool. So we hit our last safety save there, just in case. For Claire, you can just run past these, but for Leon, two of them are awake. This is what it's supposed to look like. Stunned. Stunned. And they don't bother you. Cool. So at the bottom here, you're going to have a uh, sort of final encounter with Mr. X. Switch to your magnum, get your aim shot ready. And you're going to shoot him in the head. You're going to shoot him in the head twice with aim shots. That'll drop him to his knee. You just walk past him. Easy. Another zombie on the left here. You can shoot him if you want. Shouldn't bother you. I shot him just for safety. This will be the last time that you're going to have to use your guns. Cool. So we grab this here, we set it up in our upper left, we unequip the magnum, and we make sure that our grenades are equipped. What this does is it makes it so you grab your grenades from your waist faster than if you have the gun, because he doesn't have to put the gun away. And. Here we go. So what you're supposed to do is run away from him and wait for him to start walking towards you, but I was nervous, so I just started pitching grenades. If you make sure the grenades land in front of him, they will make him bounce backwards. I didn't take damage there, but if you run again to the right, he should avoid you, or you should avoid him. I thought he was going to dash at me, so I was waiting for the dodge, and I take a hit. And I thought about throwing a grenade, and I take another hit. sitting here really thinking about restarting, but I wanted to make sure that the strategy I was working with is actually functional. Once he's powering up like that, flash grenades will stop him. If he tries to dive at you, flash grenades will stop him. And now we trigger the final part, and I, I went for it. Grab the rocket launcher, run to his right, 
swing around. Mr. X is no more. I thought about restarting here, but you have arrived at the bottom level. That was a spicy fight, so I'm gonna keep this one for the run. Uh, last bullet that you ever have to fire. Just absolutely obliterate all those zombies in the doorway. And we're here. That is Leon A without using the box and without using a healing item. Also a bunch of other achievements that we unlocked. What else did we get? Um, a hero emerges. We got Leon S. Kennedy because we got the S rank. And we would have unlocked the other trophies if I had not already unlocked them. But that was the Leon S. Kennedy run for S rank and all those extra achievements.